Hi everyone! If you've watched most of my videos, you might know that I've been working on writing a sewing book. If not, surprise! I'm writing a book. It's about history bounding, there will be sewing patterns in it, and today I'm going to be showing you the behind the scenes process of making one of those patterns. So let's just get straight into it. As you've probably figured out from the title, the pattern I'm going to be making is a shirtwaist. I do want to clarify up front that this video is not a drafting tutorial. This is more of a vlog showing you the process that I go through to make patterns to sell. To give you a bit of an overview, essentially the process works like this. I'm going to start by doing some sketches and collecting reference images to get some ideas of what the pattern might look like. At this point, I do have a rough idea in my head, but I'm going to move into 3D pretty quickly and start making half-scale tests to try things out. Once I'm happy with my design, I'm going to make a wearable mock-up of the pattern so I can make sure that everything works how I thought it would. And finally, I can create the rest of the sizes, write the instructions, and do all the things that make it into a pattern that other people can actually use. Before I show you the chaos that is my thought process, I thought I would give you a quick introduction to the project. So my current plan for the book itself is to include seven historically inspired patterns with instructions for how to make them and ideas for how to mix and match them together and all that sort of stuff. I am planning on continuing this series about putting the rest of the book together though, so I won't go into too much detail now, but if there is anything that you're particularly interested in hearing about, do please let me know and I'll do my best to include it in a future video. So now, shirtwaist. So there are a couple of things going through my head at the moment with this pattern. The first being, I'm not actually sure how I want to draft this pattern yet. Either I could draft a set of bodice blocks based on my size chart and then alter those into the shirtwaist, or I could just go straight in and draft them as a shirtwaist. I could also drape, uh, though I will say straight away that's already been taken off the list. I've decided that this pattern, just for me personally, I feel more comfortable drafting this. So I've actually already done a test. This is a little half scale version. So the mannequin is a half scale mannequin. I will link the pattern for it below if you're interested. And the shirt was drafted using a set of Edwardian instructions because I wanted to be able to compare to a more accurate silhouette. I'm not going to be using these instructions to make my pattern, both because the way that it turned out doesn't quite match the design that I want, as well as I just wouldn't feel comfortable selling something made with instructions that aren't mine because it doesn't really feel like my pattern. But this has already shown me a lot and helped me figure out what I want for my own pattern. So one of the things that I've been thinking a lot about is the sleeve. Basically, I just don't like the way that this sleeve turned out, and I think I'm just going to completely scrap this and start over. The way that the drafting instructions are written, the fullness of the sleeve is evenly distributed across the whole sleeve. That's fine if you're making a fitted sleeve. It's also fine if you're making a sleeve that's gathered all the way around. But the sleeve that I want for this pattern I want it to be gathered just at the top of the shoulder. So to do that, it'll be easier for me to draft a fitted sleeve and then to slash and spread the pattern apart just at the highest point in the sleeve. That'll mean that the fullness in the pattern lines up with the fullness of where I want the gathers to actually sit. And it'll mean that the rest of the sleeve fits more nicely into the armhole. And the other thing that I've been thinking about is the cuff. So initially I had done a cuff that's 10 centimeters, that's about, about like this on my arm. I like that idea, 
but I actually think that I'm going to make it even longer so that it goes nearly up to the elbow. And the reason for that is I think it will make the pattern more versatile because it'll give people three different options for the pattern. So you could either do the full sleeve, so with the puffy bit and then the fitted cuff, or you could do sleeveless like the top that I'm wearing today, or you could do a three quarter length sleeve if you take off the cuff and you replace it with just a narrow band. I think that becomes a little more awkward if the sleeve ends here. I don't think it'll look like a three quarter sleeve. I think it'll just look like it doesn't fit properly, you know? The other thing that I've been thinking about is the fullness here in the shoulder seam. And really, I just need to make some design decisions. That's what's going on here. So this version has some extra fullness added in, which would be its pleats here, but it would be a row of pin tucks in the final, in the final shirt. But there are a couple of other options I could do. I could either completely take it out and have a slightly more fitted shirt, or I could add a yoke and have it fitted at the shoulders and more full below that. Or I could include more than one in the book, have like a little extra tutorial on how to do the alterations for one of the other ideas. I just need to decide, basically. So for now, I think I'm going to get started with the new sleeve draft. And hopefully by the time I've finished drafting the new sleeve, I'll have made a decision about the design for the rest of the shirt. And then I'll be able to figure out my drafting process for that. Yeah, so let's get started with the sleeves, I guess. It's the next day. The sleeve pattern is all ready to go. I've even got the next half scale test cut out and ready to put in, but I'm actually going to redraft the shirt first. That's because it's all well and fine if this fits into the old shirt, but that's not the pattern that it'll actually be going into. So I do just think that I should draft the final shirt and make sure that it's actually going to fit into the one that I'm actually going to use. So to try and help me make up my mind on which to make, I did put a little poll up on my Instagram. At the moment, it's looking like it's going to be pretty tied. I don't think that that's going to change a whole lot, but I will put the, the final version over here in case it does for some reason. But I think I have decided that I'm going to go with the version that has the yoke. I think that's just my personal preference. And like I mentioned yesterday, there is still a possibility that I might include instructions for how to do the pin tucks instead. That's not a promise. That's just a just an idea that's going through my head at the moment. So what I'm going to do now and hopefully be able to finish that before the end of the day is get started on the final shirt draft.
I'm back with another update and I have once again changed my mind about everything so I hope that doesn't end up becoming a theme of this video because I think this could very quickly turn into complete chaos and be impossible to follow so I am going to try to stop doing that but we'll see. In any case I've finished the half scale mock-up even though I don't want to do that design anymore just because the base pattern for that I think I'll still use and I'll just do the yoke a little bit differently. So I did run into a bit of a problem with that one, just a drafting problem. The center front is a little bit too long so I need to look back through the drafting that I did and make sure that I know where that mistake happened so that I can avoid it for the rest of the pattern. <laughs> the design itself, uh, which I just mentioned I was going to do differently, basically I want to do a yoke still but I want to do a slightly more interesting one. So uh, thank you Shannon for that. Um, I was talking with a friend about it yesterday I think and yeah, just the reasoning is that there's a few patterns already out there with simpler ones and I think it'll just be more fun. It'll look more interesting, hopefully it'll be more interesting as a pattern for all of you. Yeah, so we're going in that direction. I haven't completely decided exactly what I'm doing, but I'll probably do some more sketches today as well. I say that, I'm just looking at the time and it's already nearly four. <laughs> Yeah, so I've got the mock-up to fix and I've got pattern to redraft. I guess maybe I won't fix this mock-up. Maybe I'll just go straight into making another one. We'll see. So here is the mock-up in question. Unfortunately, I did make both of these for the same side of the mannequin, so I can't show them to you at the same time, but I will try and put a picture up on the screen so that you can see them both. This is the extra length that I was talking about. This is just a little too much for my taste for what I'm after for this particular pattern, and it is longer than it should have been based on the measurements that I was aiming for. So something definitely went wrong, I just need to look back through and see where it was. I do like the yoke, though I think I would change the angle a little bit, but again I'm changing the whole thing so I'll just work that into the process. But other than that, I, I do like it. The back is alright. Um, I might take out a little bit of extra volume here, but a lot of the fine-tuning will happen when I make a wearable mock-up that's in my size, in full scale. Yeah, so I'm going to get started looking for the mistake in the draft, and then I'll probably try and figure out what I want to do for the new yoke. So I finished the next version and I've got it printed out and ready to go. It is already seven now so I don't think I'm going to be able to do a whole lot more today. 
but I will just jot down some notes before I call it a day and the big thing is I'm not quite happy with the angles of this zigzag. I think the topmost bit should really be completely in line with the armhole seam. It looks all right when it's on paper but it does need to be just a little bit further. So probably in the morning I will change that first thing and I might go ahead and make a half scale mock-up but a whole one. I guess I'll need to add the pin tucks in as well. I'm going back and forth on the angle that I want the pin tucks at but I think I want them parallel with whichever bit of lace they're next to. I think that'll look best. Yeah, so I'll catch up with you in the morning. So before I get started today, I wanted to show you some lace that just arrived. This isn't actually for this video, but it is for this pattern. So I guess this is a bit of a sneak preview. So it's for the, the final versions of this shirt that, that will be going in the book. So let me show you what it looks like.
Now that the half scale mock-up with the new yoke design is done, I thought I would just film another quick update. So I am more or less happy with how this turned out. I'm definitely feeling like I'm ready to move into the full scale mock-up. So there's a couple little things I'm going to change in the pattern, like the pin tucks I'm going to do a little differently. But other than that, I'm ready to, yeah, to move into the mock-up. So I am doing a wearable mock-up for this, by which I basically mean it's going to be a mock-up, it's going to serve the purpose of a mock-up, but it's going to be made out of normal fabric and everything's going to be finished off properly. Now, there's really two reasons that I'm doing this. So the first, the reason that I'm finishing it off and not just doing like a calico mock-up is to help with my instructions. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a rough draft of the instructions of how I think everything should go together, in what order, all of that, and I'll follow that when I'm making my mock-up. That just means that I'll have a first chance to catch any big mistakes, anything that might not quite work, and hopefully it'll mean that my pattern testing will go just a little bit smoother and that anything that I could have personally fixed and mistakes that I could have personally caught, I will have done that. Um, I just feel like that's a little more respectful of other people's time. Um, if people are, you know, helping me in pattern testing, I don't want them to be spending all their time catching mistakes that I could have done myself um, because there might be mistakes in there that I haven't noticed. So I'd rather you know, hopefully they catch those instead because all the big glaring ones of, oh, well, you can't do this in this order will already be done. Anyway, so the second reason is to do with the fit and my drafting process. So I do have a drafting process worked out now. I think it's okay, but I do want to test it in full size to make sure that the measurements that it was drafted for, in this case, my measurements actually work and actually make a pattern that's going to fit my size. So I'll make any changes that I need to make based on that and then I'll reverse engineer that back into the draft and that'll just give me like the best possible chance of having the rest of the sizes fit as well which again should hopefully make the pattern testing run a little smoother. Hopefully it should save me some time further down the line and mean that I have less changes to make later. Yeah. So in any case, I'm going to get started on the mock-up now. Like I've already mentioned, this is obviously not a tutorial or a sewing video really, so I'm not going to be like explaining every step. But again, I mean, I'm, I'm making a sewing pattern, so when the book is released and the pattern is released, there will be instructions if you want to make it. So just enjoy the like B-roll for now.
So I'm working on the instructions now while I'm sewing the wearable mock-up. Um, by that I mean the like actual final written instructions rather than my little checklist which I've been working from as I've been sewing. That's just to get everything out and on paper while it's fresh in my mind basically. I haven't really been recording any of that just because I don't know I feel like there's only so many time lapses of me typing on a computer that are interesting to include in one video but do let me know if you want to see more of that kind of stuff if you want me to talk more about that kind of stuff yeah like I've mentioned this is just the first in a series of videos about this book and for the shirtwaist specifically, there's going to be a second video anyway, because I'm splitting the pattern testing and some of the more technical stuff into its own video. So there will be opportunity for me to address anything if you really feel like anything major has been left off. But for now, I think I'm just going to focus on getting the wearable mock-up done and getting the instructions done, hopefully both today, if I can which would give me the rest of the week to format the pattern, get the other sizes ready, and get everything sent out and ready for pattern testing. So for now, I'm just going to get back to sewing. So the shirtwaist is finished, or rather the wearable mock-up of the shirtwaist pattern is finished. So the next step in the process is going to be pattern testing. That's with the changes that I've made based on this mock-up, um, sending the pattern files and the instructions and everything to other people to try out. 
So basically that's both to make sure that the instructions make sense, that everything goes together the way it should, and to make sure that the other sizes fit the way they should. So that has actually already started, so I've already sent those files off, but I'm going to be talking more about that in the next video in the series, along with how I incorporate all the changes that come from the pattern testing into the final pattern and sort of getting the pattern finished, more or less. Some of that will happen even later in the process, since it's going in a book and I haven't started formatting yet. But anyway, yeah, a couple of the people who are pattern testing for me were thinking about making videos to show their side of the process. Obviously, I'm not going to make any promises because it's not me making the videos. I don't know what their plans are, but if they do end up making them, I will make sure to add the links to this video, you know, above in the description. Um, I'll make a post on my community tab. Obviously, there's nothing yet because they've only just gotten the pattern and no one's finished yet, but if they make them, I'll make sure that you guys get them as well. Yeah, so that's really all that I've got for you today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!